Good morning. Welcome for this new seminar. Today, uh, we will have the talk by Dr. Javier Pascual Granado, and uh, he will talk about the pre preparation of and preparation and astro seismic exploitation of the Plato mission. So um, uh, Javier, he's a postdoc researcher here at the Instituto de Astrofísica de Andalucía in Granada, where he finished his uh, PhD in 2014. Then the, his work is uh, focused mainly on intermediate mass pulsating stars and exoplanet stars. Then he tried to overcome current challenge of the field from uh, an observational point of view by applying innovative data analysis techniques. More specifically, he have uh, developed new techniques for data processing and corrections, frequency detection and noise characterization for successful space missions such as Corot, Kepler, and TESS. Uh, in this research line, synergies with other fields arise uh, naturally, so he have uh, had a fruitful collaboration with researchers from other other fields such as GRBs, gravitational waves, blasters, and so on. He has done several stays at the NASA Ames uh, Center and the Centro de Astrofisica de Universidad de Porto in Portugal during these collaborations. Currently, he is uh, fully dedicated to the preparation of the ESA Plato 2.0 and the proposal of a HBM uh, mission. So thank you very much, uh, Javier, and the floor is yours. Um, thank you, Rene. So uh, thank you very much. Um, so I'm going to talk about uh, Plato mission and uh, specifically the astro-seismic exploitation, which is uh, what uh, uh, involves uh, our group here at, uh, at uh, the IAEA. So, um, so Plata is uh, uh, a mission from the European Space Agency uh, that was uh, proposed in 2011 as a first first class um, medium uh, medium class mission, uh, but it was uh, finally accepted in 20, 2014 as M3. So um, that was the year I finished my PhD. I also uh, married that year, so that was uh, my year. Uh, so um, the, um, the main objective of this uh, this mission is to study a planetary system that are similar to, to our solar system and to characterize uh, exoplanets. So um, well, this, this week we are uh, having actually today uh, still is going on the, the the plateau week, so I'm going to to show here some some results that are uh, um, up to date, uh, really really fresh. Some of the results that were presented yesterday. Uh, but uh, first, I I will introduce a little bit the uh, science objectives and the methodology used by uh, Plato, uh, the Plato Consortium. So this mission will be uh, launched at the end of uh, 20, 2026, still on date. And um, Plato will, will answer the, the scientific question, how do planets and planetary systems uh, form and evolve? And is our solar system special or are there other systems like ours? And are there potentially habitable planets? So this to, to, to address these uh, three scientific questions, um, we need to study the planetary system, but we also need accuracy in stellar properties, because most of the of what we know about planets is uh, derived from from the hosting stars. <clears throat> so, the, more specifically, the science objectives are to obtain bulk properties for, of thousands of exoplanets, including terrestrial exoplanets in the habitable zone of sun-like stars. 
for that the required planning property accuracies are an error of uh, less than 5% in the radius of the exoplanets, less than 10% in, in the mass, and less than 10% uh, in the edges of the, of the planets. That's it for, for, for an Earth-sized Earth uh, planet orbiting a GEC or dwarf star with um, um, magnitude brighter than uh, 11. So Plato is going to um, observe uh, very bright, very bright stars. In that uh, sense, is quite different to other um, uh, past missions like uh, Kepler, which uh, studied uh, stars um, fainter than than twelve magnitudes, between twelve and sixteen magnitudes. And the uh, and the other uh, science objective is to. Uh, to study the internal structure and evolutionary state of hundreds of thousands of stars. So why, why do we want to, to do such studies? Well, first, because um, um, we want to know the architecture, formation, and evolution of planetary systems. And we want to... to uh, to get uh, correlation studies with the stellar parameters. So on the other side, there's a stellar pulsation. We, we can study stellar pulsation to obtain precise stellar parameters, to study the internal structure of the stars and their evolution. <clears throat> For the propagation of the stellar pulsation, um, Provide the D modes, gravity modes, or pressure uh, modes, uh, provide us uh, internal rotation profiles. And uh, is basically start, the study of a star pulsation is the only way we have to, uh, to get information from stellar interiors. So, uh, Plato is going to, to focus on solar like stars uh, and, and uh, late type star, this uh, part of the HR diagram, but there, there will be also a complementary science program where um, other, other stars will, will be observed too. But we are um, especially interested in the classical, classical pulsators, uh, pulsating stars in the classical stability strip like Delta Scuti, Cephades, uh, Gamma uh, um, Rho, Rho P, and also the Madorados stars. Uh, but Plato is not the, uh, the, only, the only mission doing exoplanet uh, studies. And there's also this uh, other, other missions uh, from, from the European Space Agency. I'm more focus on the uh, exoplanet atmospheres, not doing uh, asteroid but they, they are and um, there's a um, very very nice synergy between between Plato and, and these other missions, the, the James Webb telescope, the Keops and Ariel, that will, will be uh, launched in a few years. Um, <clears throat> it's it's not the first one, the, no, it's not the first mission who has done that, of course. Uh, here you can see the the uh, past. Uh, as a, as a mission, successful like uh, Korot, uh, Gaia, Keops is, is, work, is still working, and, and Ariel will come later. And then it, it, these are NASA, NASA missions, uh, very successful like uh, Kepler and, and TESS, mm -hmm. uh, that uh, Kepler and TESS uh, all, also did uh, asteroseismology, or, uh, but uh, the, the characteristics of the mission are very different, as we will see. So about the, the methods, the methodology um, that the Plato scientists uh, will use to, to um, achieve the, the objectives. So there are basically three, three methods, um, radial velocity, asteroid and transit studies. Um, so, for example, Kepler, Kepler, and, and Tess uh, uh, use asteroid seismology combined with uh, transits. 
Uh, but for Plato, uh, radial velocity is going to be mm, more important um, because uh, Plato is, is going to study mm, bright stars. So it is possible, it is feasible to, to um, uh, perform ground based uh, observations, uh, radial velocity observations for, uh, for uh, most of the of Plato targets. So um, I guess you, you probably know uh, already how this this method uh, work, but uh, well, basically the uh, the star uh, with uh, planets um, orbit the center of mass of the system, and and, and you see the the star um, uh, traveling away. The um, um, the the wavelengths are uh, shifted to to the to the right and. When mm -hmm. the star is uh, traveling towards us, then it's, there's a, a shift toward the, toward the blue, so we can measure the uh, detect the uh, exoplanet with that uh, uh, method. Uh, After seismology, uh, I already talked a little uh, a little bit about that. It's the study of stellar pulsation and, and different frequencies uh, probe different. Uh, and radius of the star, so we can get uh, the internal uh, the internal properties at different um, depths. Uh, but uh, we can also uh, get the mass and the radius and the edges uh, of the of the stars through asteroid by fitting uh, stellar models and using uh, scaling relations. I, I would um, show uh, uh, an example now, and the transit is the, the um, more uh, obvious of these techniques is just the, the the dip in the in the light curve. So after seismology and, and, and transit studies are both based on, on, on uh, brightness um, variations. You, uh, you just need the uh, brightness variation, uh, which is called uh, the the light curves of the stars. Uh, so this is an example of a of a an asteroid study of a solar-like star. This uh, uh, 16 Cygnus A uh, star observed by Kepler satellite. So you can see that this is the, the um, poor transform uh, the power spectrum of the um, uh, of the light curve of uh, obtained gathered for uh, by by Kepler, the Kepler satellite. So when you perform the Fourier transform, you get these many many peaks. Uh, and each peak uh, correspond with a uh, uh, pulsation frequency. So the more frequencies you get, the more the um, uh, the better the, the uh, your models will be, and more information you you will get from from the star. But in in the um, in the case of uh, solar like stars, you have uh, several advantages. For example, the 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 this um, Periodicities in, between frequencies, which uh, give you um, uh, what this is, uh, frequency separation, that frequency separation um, that uh, it relates, uh, it's linked directly to to the to the mass and radius of, of a star. So you can determine the, the mass and radius of the star by by um, using this scaling relation. Uh, there are several scale, scaling relations for solar like stars. Also using the the uh, frequency of the maximum uh, or uh, um, these uh, other uh, periodicities called the small frequency separation. As you can see here, uh, a sum of this this is the large frequency separation and, and the small frequency separation that uh, also gives you some. Uh, Properties uh, and related to the core of the stars. Um, okay, so with uh, asteroid we we can get uh, the stellar mass, the radius, and the edge of the star with scaling relation and, and the stellar models uh, fit into the to the spectrum. Uh, with uh, transit studies. We, we can get the uh, inclination of the orbit and the, and the ratio between the radius of the planet and the radius of the star. So if we have the, the, the radius of the star with asteroid seismology, we can derive the, 
uh, here directly the, the radius of, of the planet with these two. And now uh, we're using a uh, ground based observation with radial velocity. We, we can get this, uh, this ratio. And because we already have the, the inclination uh, with, uh, through, through transit studies and the stellar mass, uh, we can derive here also the, the, uh, the planet mass. So uh, in the end, we get um, complete orbital parameters, density, and edges uh, of exoplanets by combining these uh, three, three techniques. Uh, <clears throat> but now, uh, if, if, we, if we look to, to the um, uh, com confirmed exoplanet, the uh, many confirmed exoplanets, more than 5,000, most of them uh, come from Kepler observations, which I said before is for a star uh, fainter than 12 magnitudes between 12 and 16. There are also uh, 7,000 candidates um, in adding Corot, Kepler K2, and test candidates. But uh, we only have uh, uh, 100 or less than, than 100 um, uh, exoplanets detected with uh, mass and, and radius, uh, for which the, the radius of the planet is less than two. Um, Earth radius. So those are, those are the most interesting targets for for Plato, and we will change the the the, the paradigm the paradigm uh, of the uh, planet studies exoplanet studies when we uh, Plato is is uh, is launched because uh, we uh, ground based observation require um, magnitude. Uh, in brighter than, than 11, and Plato will observe a, a, a lot of uh, stars uh, with uh, um, that are uh, very bright. So um, the stellar sample of of, uh, of Plato, the, there's a core sample of 15,000 dwarfs and subgiants from spectral type F5 to K7. With uh, magnitudes uh, brighter than eleven, said before. So these are um, a star for for which we can um, obtain. Uh, we can do asteroseismology, and uh, many of them that uh, will be exoplanet hosts, but there, there will be also other other stuff for ex uh, star activity studies and different things, and. Um, the, the requirement for, for this is uh, that, uh, for a star brighter than, than 10 magnitudes, 34 ppm per, per hour, and for a star uh, brighter than 11, 50 ppm uh, per, per hour of uh, noise, uh, noise level. <clears throat> then there's a, a statistical sample of more than 245,000 uh, dwarfs and giants with a uh, Magnitude uh, uh, brighter than, than than thirteen. For those uh, for, for that uh, sample, uh, we, we can do a statistics. Uh, we can estimate the, the the planet radius, for example. But uh, there will be no uh, radial velocities. Uh, they are too faint, and no no asteroid And there there is also. Uh, um, uh, more than five five thousand late type stars and dwarfs uh, that have been already observed uh, by by TESS. So there is a nice synergy with with TESS. We we will extend the observation of of TESS with Plato. <clears throat> um, apart from that, there is a guest observer program program um, that will take the eight percent of the observation time for for uh, Plato. Uh, so uh, here you can see the in the H that diagram the the, uh, the core core program is is here mm -hmm. this this style, but uh, you can uh, also propose uh, uh, for the guest observer program you can observe 
other other stars, and you can do many things like uh, combine astrosismology with magnetism uh, activity and flare studies, binarity, tides and rotation, distance scales and cluster, uh, galactic archaeology, or even transits, the gamma ray bursts, black holes. Um, <clears throat> so um, the ESA call will, will be nine months uh, prior to, to, to launch uh, of the guest Observer program. So be, be prepared if you are interested. Um, now, uh, I'm going to talk now about the, the instruments and the uh, plateau mission in general. So plateau uh, have uh, 24 telescopes which work, uh, work simultaneously observing a huge field of view. Uh, each telescope uh, has um, very large CCDs with one million electrons per pixel. Uh, this uh, this uh, provides uh, light fields with photometric accuracy better than, than 50, 50 ppm. Um, <clears throat> long ultra, ultra stable monitoring of the same star without interruption. I, I say I use here the quote because uh, um, as we will see, um, there can be um, some gaps in the in the light curve. There might be some gaps. Um, so the, the the same star during more than two two years. This uh, allows two or three transits of uh, an Earth analog. The the launch mass is uh, uh, about two point five tons. The size is uh, three point five times three point six times three point seven. Uh, the launch the launch date is the, the end still at the end of uh, 2026 with a um, an Ariane 6.2 rocket into the Lagrange point the second Lagrange point. Um, so um, there are 24 uh, cameras with uh, taking uh, with a sampling time. Uh, of 20, 25 seconds operating in, in wide light and two fast cameras uh, with a sampling time of sampling intervals of 2.5 seconds operating in, in red and blue and blue colors. So each camera has uh, four, four CCDs. Uh, each uh, of them um, with 20.3 megapixels. So these are the, the largest CCDs ever flown in a space mission. Uh, so the the total is, uh, because there are four, four CCDs, um, the total is 80, 81 megapixel per focal plane. So th that's it, that's 2 billion pixels in total. And the pixel size is uh, 18 uh, micrometers squared. What what this uh, what you see here is the um, the optical bench the um, fully full optical bench of the telescope. Uh, this is a recent picture of the uh, of the test uh, that engineers are doing with Plato. Um, so um, now the um, the data processing system. Uh, are a very important part, and I'm very proud of this because it's uh, the main electronic unit uh, uh, is being developed here at the IAEA. Uh, so you can see here the uh, main electronics unit, the main integrated with the rest of the of the units uh, with a platform for or uh, service model. Um, well, the the main electronic units, uh, what, what it does is to receive data from, from the data processing units, uh, but, uh, which, which works with uh, each camera, and process the, the the data and send it to the to the uh, central computer. So um, Plato Plato is going to um, correct and extract uh, the the light curves all the uh, light codes, 100,000 light codes per, per camera on board. 
not on the ground like other 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 missions uh, did in the past. So um, for that, uh, two, 12 powerful onboard computers are, are needed. So um, about the observation and study uh, strategy, sorry. Um, <clears throat> so you can see here the, um, the field of view, the typical field of view at 2100 uh, square degrees. The targets are that, that are uh, in the center uh, will have more precision. And, and this is this is interesting. I hope you can um, see this well. Um, here is the, the Kepler field of view. Uh, the red uh, square is corrupt field of view. Then um, this is uh, these yellow circles are the uh, test continuous uh, viewing zone. Is the the region where uh, TESS is observing uh, the the whole cycle for uh, half half a year? Uh, so uh, and this is. The outer envelope of the field uh, of the um, um, of the field for for Plato. So this is the the the, the pink the pink the circle is the um, uh, the minimal uh, field for 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 Plato uh, targets, and the green is, is is the outer the outer envelope. So you can notice here that. Plato is going to observe um, much bigger regions of the sky, and for 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 uh, two uh, two years at least. So there there will be for the nominal science mission, there will be two long pointings lasting two years, and the, but but this is not uh, fixed. Yet. The, there is a possible alternative scenario, which is uh, one long pointing for three years, and uh, and the final strategy will be decided two years before launch. That is probably next year. And if the mission is extended, uh, two long pointings uh, lasting three or four years uh, will be uh, included. So selection of the first long point in the sky field is uh, it will be uh, by June this year. Um, the observation modes I talk about uh, the 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 fast fast camera. With a 2.5 sampling, these are the, the, the data products for the fast camera, and, the, and these are the data products for the other for the other camera. So for the moment, we have a uh, um, light course uh, with uh, 25 uh, seconds of uh, sampling, but um, uh, there will be uh, images also. This uh, image uh, is the uh, the name for uh, what French people give to to a target pixel files uh, uh, in in Kepler case, for example. Um, <clears throat> so the some some news about the development status of the of the mission. So the payload module is uh, is completed. The payload mo payload module um, the structural uh, and thermal mo uh, module tests are completed. Uh, vibration test uh, test uh, two, and um, the flight manufacturing uh, was released in, in October twenty twenty two. Um, so uh, just brief summary: the spacecraft uh, progress is uh, is going well, and there have been some some delays, but mitigated. So the uh, the integration. Uh, will start in, in 2023 as, as planned. And uh, the launch is still baseline for December 2026 with four months of, as, a, as a margin. So Platinum mission is per, uh, still performing very well thanks to the combined effort of, of all teams. Uh, for, <clears throat> now for, for the um, uh, science part, the development uh, status of the um, um, science uh, algorithm system models have been uh, the first version of this uh, 
models have already been delivered to the Plato, uh, Plato data center for testing and integration. And now we are entering a phase of test uh, with a proto prototype code actively being tested using simulated data. Uh, the first round of tests consists of functionality tests uh, before proceeding with scientific and performance tests. Um, so we are, we are uh, especially interested in the complementary science program because uh, um, is where, where the uh, classic apple status will be studied. And uh, so the development status of this um, of this part of the mission is, is uh, progressing too. So the activities largely center now around simulations. The team uh, have been working on a set of massive uh, simulations using the Plato, Plato simulator to maximum of, uh, to, to its maximum of uh, capacity and functionality. Um, <clears throat> To make sure that the simulated lab has covered the needs uh, of the complementary science program. So the, the, the goal here is to, to, to get the community prepared um, in time for the launch and I'm happy to answer the question like, like this one. If I have uh, this group of interest in extragalactic objects whose magnitude distribution is a uh, uh, peaks at 18, can you can you do that with Plato? So that's what uh, uh, we are doing now. Um, okay, so I, I, now I'm going to, to focus on, on our, uh, our team, Plato IAEA team. We have uh, the technical technical team and scientific team. So we, I, I have to say uh, that, that we, we are, I'm focusing here on Plato IAEA contribution, but we, um, Plato, the, actually the Plato project is, um, uh, involves also the University of Granada with a, a PI, uh, Juan Carlos Suarez. I have to say that because he, he's there. Uh, so, um, so about the Plato IAA, uh, so the, the scientific team, uh, the PI was uh, Rafael Garrido Alba, but he's now at Honorem. So I'm, I'm, I'm leaving now the, the scientific activities of the, of the Plato team uh, as a postdoc. The, um, Jose Ramon is, uh, and Mariela also postdoc, and we we are um, waiting for a new postdoc, Sebastian, a new and old postdoc here, known by many people, Sebastian Francis. Uh, Alejandro Ramon Ballesta is a uh, postdoc, he's in his uh, last year of uh, PhD. And Susana Martin Ruiz is also uh, in Plato, Plato team, but he's, he, uh, she's, um, um, managing the sky, uh, sky quality office, it's more involving in the sky quality office. Uh, the technical, the technical yeah. team or, or PI uh, uh, is uh, Julio, uh, Julio Rodriguez Martin, and uh, we uh, have uh, an increasing number of members in the technical team because of the, the, the more activity, intense activity now, and because we are also um, participating in, in another mission. Uh, which I will talk about uh, later. So uh, that's uh, Rosario Sanz, Carmen Pastor, Beatriz Aparicio, José Manuel Ramos, uh, Juan Manuel uh, Gómez, Nicolás Robles, uh, Miguel Sánchez, uh, and Jean Paolo Candini just uh, um, arrived to the, to the IAE. I hope I, I, I didn't, I didn't uh, forget anyone. Um, Technological activities. So, how the the, um, the progress of uh, technological activity from the Plato IAA team. So that um, uh, this is the uh, a picture of the, uh, the software for, for testing for testing the, the the reception of the twelve cameras of twelve cameras and, and processing and sending to the central computer in a closed box. So. The, Yes, so actually, here's the, the, the main electronic units and the, the software they are developing. Um, <clears throat> so, so here, here uh, at the right is uh, Nicolas Robles uh, uh, assembling the, the, the box with the data processing units inside. And here you can see here the thermal and structural model of the main electronic units, uh, black box. Um, this is also also new. This is from from uh, 
yesterday, I think. The new, new pictures, I mean, uh, the electronic board for the EQM, EQM model. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, well, and um, the scientific activities of the Plata IAA team. We are uh, mainly involved in these three working working packages. This is uh, the, 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 the inside the, the complementary science program, the, the working package of pulsar and stars. That is a uh, <clears throat> um, focus on main sequence stars, the, the data analysis and, and modeling of main sequence stars, stars hosting exoplanets, but um, also classical pulsators. Uh, <clears throat> so we, we are all involved in this working package here. And also um, there, there are some people involved in, in, in the uh, in the, pack, the working package uh, determination of lean, lean darkening. Uh, we organized a, a, a workshop uh, uh, a few years ago uh, about uh, lean darkening preparation, uh, calculation preparation for, for travel. And, and this is a preparation of light course for asteroid analysis. This is what is taking me more, more, more time. Um, uh, I'm involved in the transit light removal for 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 uh, um, and, uh, prepare the light course to to, to perform uh, asteroid seismology because transits are uh, like um, um, well high high the pulsations produce a very strong signal in the in the power spectrum and, and high pulsations. So we we need to to remove the the, the transits. Uh, before before performing any any frequency analysis for asteroid seismology, uh, <clears throat> so the, recently recently we we have um, uh, published this this uh, volume. It is a uh, uh, a book uh, called the "Challenges of Asteroid Seismology in the Era of the Space Mission," uh, where um, several several uh, authors have uh, published. Uh, what is the, the uh, more controversial in theory and, and um, data analysis in, in, in our field? And this is uh, also a, a good preparation for for Plato uh, Plato Plato mission. So that this uh, we um, Antonio Garcia from the University of Granada and me were editors of this of this book, and um, to. Just to, to give some some um, <clears throat> um, some pictures of the of this volume, this is a paper published by Alejandro, uh, uh, or PhD student, where he applied uh, uh, this synchro squeezing transform for the first time and detected uh, some short time scale amplitude mod modulation in in, uh, in the Tascuti stars. Uh, this is the, the work of uh, of Marielle. Uh, she uh, she she has found uh, that uh, stellar parameters can be uh, estimated um, very precisely with uh, with a study of non nonlinearities in high amplitude delta scuti star. And it, um, this paper uh, from from Rafa Garrido, uh, where I was involved too, uh, the quaternionic transform is. Uh, um, an alternative um, frequency analysis is uh, um, uh, extending the use of a Fourier transform to the to the two quaternions, uh, and it was uh, quite interesting because we 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 have found um, uh, peaks where only uh, was found noise before, uh, very with very high signal to noise ratio. So this is a very promising uh, technique for for detecting um, solar demos. Um, <clears throat> so I, I said before that, that I spend most of the time now with the preparation of analysis, uh, uh, preparation of of, uh, uh, of light codes for the analysis uh, for the asteroid analysis. So this is uh, this is. Uh, <clears throat> Uh, this is a pipeline we we are uh, developing for for this uh, working package, uh, plateau working package, and the goal is uh, to um, 
develop and specify techniques and procedure needed to, to prepare like for a stellar analysis, not only a stellar model, but also rotation and activity. So you, you can see here that this is a very big uh, um, transit. So of course you cannot do asterisk model with a light core. So we, we we have to remove the the transits and uh, fill the, the the gaps on or model the transits and correct the, the light curve with the mm, many many different uh, ways of dealing with this. Uh, and this is an example of uh, what we want as final product from from this from this pipeline. Uh, for us, there's a small idea. So it's a, a light curve without no transits and no mm, no dips and no curves, and a very clean power spectrum with high signal to noise uh, peaks. Uh, but this is the most complex uh, sub model with many different algorithms interconnected. So this is the uh, <clears throat> these are the, the models uh, for for, uh, uh, for for plateau. <clears throat> Um, data correction and and this is the uh, um, the most complex. So the, the main worry is to ensure a, a proper uh, transit removal without uh, with preserving the, the original uh, frequency content and as fast as possible because we are going to process uh, uh, thousands, tens, or thousands uh, of light curves. So the, uh, here's uh, an example of uh, the, the algorithm I, I, I developed. Uh, so you can see the, the transits uh, are uh, the transits are, are corrected, I, are removed. You need, of course, you need the, the uh, ephemerides, you need the orbital period uh, for that. Um, <clears throat> and then you, you, you remove the transit and you, you interpolate and you get this nice lat curve. Uh, which allows you to 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 perform astrosismic studies. Now I'm I'm uh, translating this into our language because uh, MATLAB is not accepted by by the um, uh, PDC in the Plato Data Center. So um, synergies. So I I talked uh, about uh, tests be before. Um, with with uh, uh, with Plato, we we will have uh, refined planetary radii, improved stellar ages, and extension of, of observed lines, uh, which uh, will allow to to, do, to perform transit timing variations, and uh, that will be also a nice synergy with uh, James Webb, Ariel, uh, ground-based characterization of atmosphere and the and the chemistry, um, and and now uh, Hagen. Which is uh, the high precision, the the, the, the satellite uh, we are uh, just in the phase phase here of the proposal, and it will it will do a high precision astrosismology of dense stellar fields. So I'm going to talk a little bit about Hayden because I think it's very very interesting, um, and 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 also takes. Uh, mm, much time now for a group. So um, the, the uh, hiding proposal was shortlisted last uh, November. Uh, there are five missions uh, shortlisted, and this year there will be uh, um, an evaluation uh, where um, only three three missions were uh, will be selected. Uh, so we are. Um, we are uh, meeting with uh, ESA, ESA people now to to um, to, to um, fulfill the the, um, the requirements of, of the European Space Agency. The PI of this uh, mission is Andrea Miglio from, from the University of Colonia, uh, Bologna. I'm sorry, um, and uh, and there is a Spanish contribution from the University of Valencia, the IAEA, the University of Granada, the uh, the ISC, the uh, ICE, etc., cetera, etc., cetera. and the, <clears throat> the Spanish PI is um, Andres Moya from the University of Valencia, and here the contact persons uh, uh, Julio Rodriguez for the technological part and uh, for the scientific part, uh, myself. Uh, <clears throat> so, what are the science goals of Hayden? Um, 
Well, um, this is a next step for, for us, there's making studies. If we have uh, seen that the, the, there were uh, exoplanet missions with uh, uh, com some component of uh, asteroid involved, now it's going to be more the, the, the opposite. It's going to be an, uh, uh, the, the main um, objective of the mission is going to be asteroid There will be also exoplanet studies, but um, the um, for the Voyage 2050 Senior Committee Report of the uh, European Space Agency, the, there was this recommendation that a medium mission uh, designed to carry out pure astrosmology is desired. So this is uh, this is hiding. Um, hiding uh, will will do astrosmology of a stellar open and global cluster control environments, and will will produce uh, breakthroughs in stellar and galactic uh, science. Um, uh, so the science, uh, the main science goals are, are high precision stellar astrophysics, especially in the metal poor regime, evolution and formation of stellar clusters, and the assembly is history and chemical evolution of the Milky Way bulge and nearby dark galaxies. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, okay. So um, operation mission intended to observe a global open cluster, but none of the previous space mission was properly designed for, for open clusters. So this, this is uh, um, an important part, very important part of the of high mission. Uh, for Kepler, there the are all only four accessible clusters and two old open clusters observed in an acceptable condition with a limited number of stars. And for uh, K2, the uh, then the follow uh, the mission following Kepler. Uh, there, there was uh, 20 accessible cluster, two cluster observed in suboptimal condition. Um, so uh, the global cluster M4 and the open cluster M60, 67. Um, <clears throat> so these are the, the, the main cluster that um, Hayden, Hayden will will observe. And um, there are other that are uh, secondary, but these, these are the, the very populated and the, the, they have uh, in, uh, very interesting science um, um, <clears throat> science objectives uh, that I will I will not uh, detail here because probably I will I will uh, I will do a, a, in the future a talk about this. Um, I will not talk about uh, about that now because uh, this is a uh, uh, about plateau mission. So, uh, but uh, you can see here that uh, the, mm, the the PSF of Hayden is uh, much much smaller than Kepler, even Plato or or Test. So this is this is uh, um, designed for 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 uh, cluster studies. It's much better for for cluster for dense stellar fields. Uh, the Spanish con uh, contribution is uh, the third largest um, after yeah. after France and and, and Italy. Uh, so I said that all these uh, institutes are involved, and we have a uh, large expertise uh, derived from from previous projects in stellar physics, stellar modeling, stellar evolution, uh, asteroid seismology, seismic data analysis, stellar rotation, stellar activity, magnetism. Galactic stellar population, uh, galactic archaeology. Or we can uh, take advantage of all these uh, these uh, expertise and for 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 high emission. And we have an instrumental contribution from, from IAEA and and from other mm -hmm. other centers. Uh, more specifically, um, the contribution of uh, of Plato the technological team is. Uh, um, is involved also in 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 hiding for the that uh, data processing unit and the PSU and the thermal uh, stability. So uh, with that, with those uh, acknowledgement, I I finish here and, and thank you very much for for your attention. Thank you, Javier. And so now questions and comments. Thank you, Javi, for, for your talk. Interesting and for the overview of data. 
uh, and cooling as well, which is the level of uncertainty that finally you will get for the stellar parameters. Because uh, for a time you have to say that actually it's going to provide the best accuracy so far, but uh, you never provide an example with the current techniques, so which will the level of accuracy. Mm -hmm. Well, um, well, uh, it it depends on the on the on the target. It depends on the observation you have. If you have longer observation, if you have a, a higher sampling, you, you will you will uh, get more uh, more precision in your in your uh, parameters. Um, but uh, well, the the, um, uh, the the mission is designed to to comply with this uh, uh, 10, 10 percent uh, minimum of ten percent error. Uh, when you when you use asteroids is small because you don't have any other way to, to do that. So well, uh, the thing is about the current accuracy that we can reach, for example, for all the test paper we are having an accuracy for the stellar parameters of about 10 percent, 10 percent in radia, in radius, in masses, and mm -hmm. so about 10 percent, 15 percent. So yes, you can go further, like maybe five percent. Mm -hmm. Could be a step forward if we can reach that level. It could be amazing. But, uh, uh, you, uh, but the, in, in test, you, you, don't, you don't have uh, such uh, uh, long ba baseline uh, for, for the observation, like uh, two, two, two years uh, or, or more. So I'm not sure. I mean, I mean, for test, we are not using a process model for the stellar characterization. For mm -hmm. In test, we are using other techniques, like spectra yeah. and other combination. Mm -hmm. So my point is, how in cooperation of the stars technology in cooperation with the current techniques that they've been used in other missions like in test for us for the characterization of the star mm -hmm. which is the improvement that you can bring now with play yes i i, th I think that there's uh, i don't know if i have here uh yes. no i'm oh, sorry i i i have a i had a um, there's a there's a um, uh, a plot where the precision is compared for uh, between Plato and I thought I uh, let me see. Yeah, no, 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 because I removed the Plato performance because it's already too long. Uh, so um, yes, you, you're, the Plato performance is uh, is much much better uh, than than PES. Uh, uh, it's uh, comparable mm, to Kepler. Kepler is the, the is the more precise uh, mission the, the, where you can get the, the, the um, uh, smaller smaller server for for your uh, stellar parameters. So Plato is going to be um, more or less like a, like Kepler. No, but but the stellar parameters are not obtained from test data. There are stellar parameters are obtained from other techniques like the spectra. Um, mm -hmm. So no directly from the light tool of test. So I think that this will be the different with Plato, right? Because with Plato you can obtain the stellar characterization okay. directly okay. from the light tools. I, I th we cannot do that. So, sorry, I, I, I thought you, that you were you, you were talking about the asteroid me uh, uh, getting the parameters parameters to asteroid me. Well, I mean in comparison Paris. with the current techniques that we do in other with other mission because we cannot apply astro seismology in other mission taking test we cannot mm -hmm. obtain from there actually because of most of the stars are not pulsating mm -hmm. but uh yes yes to know the, the level of accuracy that you can reach with uh, for it, but that is okay we can read we can speak later about it mm -hmm. i'm interested in this in this level of, yeah. of accuracy I, yeah i can i can show you the the, the plot and you too thank you yeah. <laughs> I'm interested in the in, in, in different samples that are running up here. Mm -hmm. uh, silence. So you have like a 15,000 like four sample, then you say this is the sample. Mm -hmm. And then the end load. So I would like to know why they are separated. Was it separating things in terms of just uh, brightness or? Yes, they, they are separated uh, be, uh, in <clears throat> because of the brightness. So you said for the statistical sample there would be no asteroid seismology. Why is that? I mean, you still can do asteroid seismology of very faint targets even from the ground. So there's <coughs> uh, yeah. some uh, mm -hmm. know, tasks of the, of the working groups. Let me see. Uh, there, some, yeah, there it is. So for, for the statistical sample, you have a uh, uh, Painter, painter stars. So um, and the the statistical sample is not uh, end to to perform asteroid seismology. I, I I don't think it's, it's the the 
that you are too restricted, but it's not the 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 main uh, goal of the of these statistical sample. That's what what uh, I, mean, I, I mean. understand. If you are contained, you won't you won't get any. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but, but but because uh, they they are uh, painters um, painter the stars, the, the then you cannot um, uh, fulfill the, the requirements. So the, 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 there is not this stellar uh, statistical sample is not aimed to uh, um, to do astrosismology because you, you cannot. Uh, so um, this is not prepared to. Uh, F5 is seven, or the sample, or they are less mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, let's see. Yeah, they 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 are also uh, they are also F5 to to K7 uh, stars, but the the um it's not here. No. Oh, okay, so. <clears throat> Uh, they also also dwarf and unsub giants. The statistical sample is also uh, dwarf and unsub giants. Uh, but um, as I said, mm, the aim is not to to perform astrosismic studies, so the, the, mm, because now that you cannot fulfill the, the requirements, but you can still uh, do many things with all, with those uh, light codes. You will get that because uh, it will be uh, they will have uh, less precision. Not only because uh, because of the um, because of, uh, of the uh, brightness because they are fainter, but also because um, they will be observed uh, in uh, not in the center of the of the of the field. So the the, the center of the field is is um, the, the field is centered in the in the core sample, and you have the the uh, the other the other stars populating in the. Um, the envelope of the of the field. And in the like how this if they relate to that, how is going to be the difference? Is because you said that there's two year or maybe three year uh, long year observation, but I guess you have some data releases along the way. And is it plan like this or so, like the community or mm -hmm. the and your I guess all the Yeah, okay. Uh, thank you for the question. Uh, <clears throat> uh, the, um, actually, uh, it's not decided uh, yet because uh, some some of us prefer that the, the, um, the, the, the data is released uh, openly as uh, um, just at the moment it's uh, the other uh, the plot to the data center, but uh, other prefer that, that, that there's um, some uh, um, period of uh, of commissioning like uh, one year or so, but I I, I think it's, it's not decided still. It's something we have to to discuss. Maybe maybe Juan Carlos have more information about that. I don't know. Uh, yes, it's a, it's about to be decided. It's being discussed in the PM, the Plato uh, main board, and uh, we have to decide it and publish. So we cannot say it. Right now, but uh, well, it will be now very soon. Soon, in the next months. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Yes. 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 Question. Uh, and you say that this decision I have very important. If you have only one percent of the decision in the solar. Size. I mean, the 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 coding is 
I know how to rotate, the rotation rate. So I first would like to know how the sun is because after saying doesn't take into account this this question. The question of the rotation. So what's in the meaning of I apply? Today, nothing because we don't know what's the role of the rotation and how we interpret our rotation seems to the which is the part of the I'm sorry to clarify if you if you are in to clarify and okay. Okay, there is a comment by Eloy. Un solo punto. Lo que pasa es que no estoy seguro de que ese, de que ese, eh, ese nivel de, de ruido se refiera a un, a un punto. ¿no? Yo creo que, que estas son simulaciones que hace Reza Samadi de la, de la eh, ratio eh, ruido-señal, eh, teniendo en cuenta las características de, la, de las observaciones de... Eh, durante todo, si son dos, dos años, pues eh, será lo que, se, los, lo que se tiene después de integrar durante, durante esos dos años. ¿no? Eh, claro, si, lo, si eso lo, in, lo llevas a, a un solo punto, pues entonces mmm, yo no creo que, sal, que saliera esa, eh, que saliera esa, esa, esa tasa de ruido, debería salir eh, bastante, bastante menos. ¿Bastante mejor o bastante mejor? Creo que bastante, bastante mejor. 
Claro, incluso sería, entonces sí que mejoraría en las mismas condiciones para el mismo tipo de target, pero entonces no impactaría en la decisión de la carga. Uh -huh. O sea, hay que hacer con los bajados más dulce, vamos a hacer un seis, o sea, tiene que contar señales por encima de cinco o seis micro micro para que realmente sea así. Vale. La parte que he quitado es la que está creando más, <risa> más interés. ¿Más cuestiones, Camila? I am interested to like to come up to from the question. Uh, were you referring to the mass rate view of the aviation, or were you referring to other parameters of the start? Well, mass and radius are the typical ones to characterize later on the, the time. And uh, right now we are reaching the current technique with the set speed or the stellar spectra, we reach about 10% of accuracy of this parameter. And there, of course, are the latest propagated to the planet parameter. So, this is my question. With the level, we, will be, we will reach this after cosmology with the mm -hmm. Maybe you know. Yeah. No, no, no. I, oh. I, don't, I was just like, trying to understand the. Yeah, but why do you compare with with this? Uh, that is why I, I was saying that uh, uh, Plato is comparable to to Kepler because you cannot do uh, those uh, studies with uh, with PES. So uh, I, uh, there are there are Kepler studies with that. Well, after the study is done, the experiment can be determined with solar-like stars. No, no thermodynamic can be excited. Uh, uh, solar-like star. And you get to a one and a two percent. So that's wow. what you get this temperature in some in some So this is and I different. guess with, this, these are some uh, specific um, yes. uh, studies for maybe I don't know uh, certain objects or something. Okay. And you get to this one for the age or the mass no the mass mass and the mass and the so the, this level is amazing. If you, you can yeah. reach a level of uncertainty of 1% for this parameter, then it will be amazing. But this is yes. as Javi said, you're going to go to different targets. You're going to go to targets that were plateaued main or it's going to earth like in the sense mm -hmm. of one year orbits mm -hmm. and that. So in the position, it's not the same when you have a Kepler target with, I don't know, solar light meaning for year. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you're going to have to. Do you know what's the maximum period of the planets that the mean we can detect to with a with a nominal emission? Oh. Oh, I have some studies that have been done on that. The, the, the nominal mission is, uh, is, uh, will be uh, pointings of uh, two two years. So you need at least uh, three, three, three transits to, to claim a, a positive uh, detection. So that's, uh, I don't know, uh, um, 18, eight, eight months or um, uh, seven, seven months, I think. Is it? So we don't get one. But you can claim a detection with two transits. Mm -hmm. With two, with two with transits. Two transits, and then you can reduce the half of the time. Yeah, and, and some people do, uh, do that with just one transit, but no, but with, with one transit, you can look at the field. So, with two, yes, yes, with, with you have the, you can have the mm. field, and then you can at least have an approach to which is a proper period. But there's, there's no, the, of the transit, you can there's say, no, no you can say that it belongs to the same planet. I, I mean, the three, three transits is the, the, mini, the minimum to, to say there's some, some periodicity, because if you have two transits. It's not periodicity. Mm -hmm. There is there is uh, two two events repeated after some some uh, time yeah. interval. No, but if you have a one year of observation, when you have two transits, and these transits agree in duration and in shape, and uh, then you have a, you have the event that belongs to the same planet, so you have a detection. Mm -hmm. So you need a longer observation to keep observing, and of course, but with two transit, and at least for this two transit, we are using to claim a detection for long period of time. Mm -hmm. 
I, I don't believe those uh, detection has a positive. I, I would say it's uh, maybe a candidate, but not a positive detection with two, with two points. And you can say with two points, you can say whatever you want. Whatever you want. <laughs> no, because, because the, uh, you have a, a period is the definition of a period is something that repeats uh, after uh, you, do, you don't have a, a, a repetition if you have to to transit. There's no period. There is a um, time interval between two events. Uh -huh. If they are uh, flares or transits or any other or star pulsation, you, you don't know that? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> I think <laughs> Things that have really repeated the events, not only that we have tracked the course of the death, but the same situation of people to come on philosophical. More questions and comments? You think that? Yes, I just wanted to be very excited. You said there were a uh, 50 second indication, but also 600 seconds. And so, would we believe that it is something like this that you have also the immunity? Mm -hmm. I, I, I know the, the, the images uh, will be the, the liver, but uh, I, I don't think that they, they are going to deliver the the, um, the full frame images, the, the film. So like for the light works, would be light works for all the statistic, statistical samples that will be done and will be, will be which time stamp? Sorry. Uh, so, so the light course, which time stamp will they have? And is are they for the, the statistical sample? The whole sample? Yeah. Well, I think I think it's the statistical sample. Um, um, but but uh, you, you cannot have the, the, the full uh frame image is the, the full time so uh, the, the time stamp of the full images because uh, the, uh, these are really uh, too big. So the the, the, the satellite cannot uh um save all this information and what will be the time stamp for the light course 2.5 seconds 25 50. 2.5 is for the for, for the fast camera and and 20 25 for the uh, normal camera great i think we can close the seminar here thank you very much Javier, for the Muy bien.